good morning so in, from the last two classes we had been dealing with measurement of displacement and uh, we had uh, covered resistive potentiometers and uh, both linear and root for measuring both linear and uh, rotary displacements and also inductive uh, transducers and LVDTs and RVDTs for the purpose of uh, displacement measurement. And now in this particular uh, lecture we would be looking at capacitive transducers for measurement of displacement. Again we would look both in rectilinear for rectilinear displacement and also for rotary moment. Now, similar to the inductive transducer case, we can look into the parameters that can be modified to modify the um, what do you call to modify the capacitance of a parallel phase capacitor. So, to that, if you look at the parameters that determine the capacitance, you see that the capacitance C is epsilon A by D where epsilon is the dielectric constant of this medium between the two parallel plates a is the overlapping area of the plates and d is the distance between the plates so obviously we can use any of these three parameters modify any of these three parameters by appropriate displacement and then get the relationship with the capacitor and use the capacitance value or some other derived value from those capacitance to determine the displacement that has caused this change in the capacitance. Now as I said we can use any of these three parameters either by changing the distance between the plates or by uh, what do you call by having a motion in a direction parallel to the plane of the plates so that the overlapping area changes so here if you have two plates that were initially in this configuration okay and then you move one of the plates and now it goes into a configuration like this so this overlapping area is now changed okay so this can be used as a way to measure uh, to modify the capacitance and measure the uh, displacement via the capacitance or the third way is to move this dielectric medium with respect to the parallel to parallel plates and create a set of uh, <coughs> two parallel capacitors of varying area let us say a1 and a2 okay and with the uh, dielectric constant epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 and so this will act as if there are two capacitors in parallel okay this with epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 and a2 and this with the parameters epsilon 1 and a1 with the same distance okay so as a1 and a2 changes due to this motion the value of this parallel uh, capacitance parallel combination of the capacitors will also change and that probably that can be used to gauge how much motion has happened okay so these uh, in addition to directly measure displacement these capacitors or particularly the uh, this capacitor arrangement where you change D that can be used as a secondary transducer to measure force or pressure. So there is a force that is applied here and that force causes a small change in the displacement or a uh, small change in the distance between these two parallel plates. And that in turn manifests as a change in the capacitance. So in effect, 
this force or the pressure is measured through the force is converted to a displacement and the displacement is the converted to a capacitance so this capacitor acts as a secondary transducer in that case okay now let us look at each of these uh, three cases individually okay so first let us look at the way a plate area has changed so this seems to be quite similar so since uh, the plate area can be large uh, then uh, you can have you can use this capacitance for relatively large displacements this this method for relatively large displacement so the way that it, it is changed is by changing the overlapping area okay so here so the overlapping area will be now a into w into x where x is the displacement that you have here okay and then the sensitivity of this would be dou c by dou x which turns out to be dependent upon the what you call the dielectric constant the width of this capacitor plate and the distance between these two plates and this is in case of a linear case okay and in case of a rotary case you can have a capacitor that looks like this okay where you have two fins and the relative motion between those two pins is parameterized by this uh, angle theta okay and uh, because you want the capacitance to change with angle this is not a complete circle or a complete semicircle even so you would have a, um, a limit on the maximum angle of motion and the capacitance is given by this expression and if you change if you see the sensitivity or how this capacitance changes with change in the angle you would again get a relationship a a sensitivity that is going to be a constant okay and uh, so what is happening is that the conclusion is that the variation of the capacitance is linear with respect to the displacement okay and if i want to increase the sensitivity what i would do is that you have to increase either so if you take the linear case what you have to do is you have to increase the dielectric constant use a different material okay increase the width of the capacitor or decrease the distance between these two parallel plate capacitors okay now the increasing the width is not a very good option because that will make a more larger bulky capacitors which again is not really useful when you want uh, the capacitor or plates of the capacitors to be movable so larger larger and bulkier capacitors are out of question okay and similarly the perm the dielectric constant can also can't also be increased uh, arbitrarily okay and there is a limit within which you can change d also you can't change d to a very low value okay so it appears that uh, if you want to have more resolution okay so if i want to have make measure small displacements okay the change in plate area is not a really good option for this for larger displacement it is okay for larger displacement from a 1 mm to a few centimeters you can use this but for smaller displacement probably you have to go for some other method okay and fortunately we do have an option we can go for changing in the change of distance in the plates okay now how does this help us so um, when you see that this is the the formula for the capacitance and you see the sensitivity with respect to the plate distance d you would see that this is epsilon a by d square for so the sensitivity is high so dou c by dou d okay 
is high for small values of d and this decreases as d increases okay so when you have a small plate distance overall minute changes in the plate distance a minute change in the place uh, the separation of these plates is going to cause quite a significant change in the capacitance and hence that can be detected very well okay so so this is really that's why this is really good for small displacement up to less than 1 mm to few millimeters okay but there is a downside also the downside is that the capacitance is now inversely proportional to the distance okay so so first of all the relationship between the capacitance and the distance is non linear and secondly it the sensitivity unlike the earlier case uh, is now a non const constant sensitivity okay so to be of any real use some sort of linearization should be done for this okay you should find a range either you have to find a range in which the sensitivity is approximately constant or you have to use a circuitry by which the sensitivity can be linearized or yeah sensitivity can be linearized and one way to uh, approach this problem is to say that the capacitance so there is a small displaced plate distance d0 okay and the uh, actual the plate moves from d, from in the range d0 plus or minus minus delta d okay so there is a mean distance d0 between the plates and this goes from d0 plus delta d to d0 minus delta d actually the other way around okay so that is made now if you see this and if you say that this delta d is much less than d0 if you make that assumption then you can say that the sensitivity would be approximately epsilon minus epsilon a by d0 square and this is going to be constant so the sensitivity is approximately constant though now what you have here is that c would be equal to some c0 plus delta c and this would now be equal to c0 plus s into delta d okay but s is going to be a negative number so the capacitance is decreasing so this delta c is negative for delta d being positive okay any case so but but the main point of concern here is that we had seen that this method of um, changing the distance between plates is applicable only when delta d delta d0 or d0 itself is less than a few centimeters so the range of this method itself is only up to a few centimeters few millimeters and on top of that if we make a restriction that this variation is going to be delta d which is again much less than d0 then this is a very very restricted range and that it is not a very wise choice to use this method okay this approach for it okay so an alternative thing has to be done okay and so the alternative way to see is not to use a single capacitance use a use this change of uh, plate distance in a circuit okay and let's see how that can be done okay as i had said earlier the change of this plate distance this uh, philosophy can be used as a secondary transducer as a means to measure pressure and uh, force in a secondary transducer now let's take this uh, scenario so there are two 
pressures and I want to find the difference between these two pressures and at the center you have a diaphragm this is a diaphragm that is movable okay and it is connected to two other membranes okay which are fixed so this central um, uh, diaphragm is movable okay so let let me it is and so you have a central diaphragm that is movable okay and on both sides you have two other plates which are fixed okay and now if you connect this plate okay and this in this plates to one end and these two plates if you connect together okay then you have two capacitors so and due to the uh, change of the diaphragm change of, the, of motion of the diaphragm this can go from this can be d1 this can be some d minus d1 okay where d is the total distance between these two plates okay then you have two capacitors and the capacitance of both the capacitors is changing due to the change of the relative change in the displacement or, or distance between plate 1 and plate 2 and plate 2 and plate 3 okay so basically what you have is you have we have two fixed plates and one moving plate and they form a combination of two capacitors okay and that can be used as a measurement device okay so either they can be connected in series or a parallel so let's see what is happening here okay so you have a, a setup like this and there is a small displacement x here and it is assumed that when it is at uh, zero position then both the plates are both the fixed plates are at equal distance from the moving plate so the when there is a small displacement x from the mean point here okay uh, the distance between this uh, plate 1 and the movable plate m that changes okay that decreases so c1 is epsilon a d minus x and this displacement this change this distance becomes d plus x this distance is d minus x okay so c2 is like this and then we can find that the potential between these two plates okay is c2 by c1 plus c2 times the total potential so that is d minus x by 2d and similarly the potential between these two plates is given by d plus x by 2d now if you look into the difference in the potential uh, between these e1 and e2 then you would see that that is x by d times e what is to be noted is that first of all now this delta e is directly proportional to the displacement x and secondly the uh, to the to overall display overall the change in the overall uh, difference in the potential is independent of of either epsilon or the plate area a there are no other parameters of the capacitor that appear in this equation okay so only what is required to know x is 
E and D. And in fact, if I want on, if I'm only interested in X by D, I don't even need the exact value of D. Okay. And due to its higher sensitivity or the higher, uh, yeah, higher sensitivity at lower, uh, at uh, smaller uh, values of D, okay, this can be very well used for equally well for smaller displacements and since there is no expression like divided by d0 square which sort of becomes ineffective which makes the capacitance not really useful at higher displacements this sort of a methodology this thought of a circuitry makes the range also higher so it can be extended the measurement range can be extended beyond few millimeters also okay it can be it can measure displacement in a few centimeters even okay we want the third way is by changing the dielectric constant here as i said earlier uh, we, are, we will be moving the two parallel plates are fixed with respect to one another and there is no relative motion between the capacitor plates. However, there is relative motion between the capacitor plates and the dielectric constant uh, or dielectric medium. So you have a block of dielectric medium. Okay. And this block is now changed, is, is uh, moved with respect to the plates. So effectively what you end up with is that there are two capacitors formed, two parallel capacitors formed. One is one with the dielectric uh, solid or liquid dielectric medium as the as epsilon. Okay, let us say this epsilon one and another one with some other gas which is in whose ambience it the entire capacitor is being kept in okay that as another thing and uh, let's look into both the cases of a linear displacement or and also how this can be used for measurement of uh, height in liquid levels okay so let's take this case so here you have a dielectric medium that is in motion okay let us say at a base case okay when it is at rest let us say that l1 portion of this uh, capacitor is with air that is with a dielectric constant of uh, epsilon 0 okay and l2 is with some other medium as a dielectric medium and so the dielectric constant is epsilon r epsilon zero okay where epsilon r is the relative uh, permittivity of this material okay so since these two form two parallel plates or, or two parallel capacitors then the total capacitance is uh, c1 is can be given like c1 plus c2 okay when you add up you get this expression now if there is a small displacement x in the indicated direction what is happening is the length l1 decreases and the length l2 increases okay or the length with epsilon 0 as the dielectric uh, constant decreases and the one with epsilon epsilon r epsilon, r, epsilon 0 that is going to increase okay and that in effect would mean that c plus delta c where delta c is the change in the capacitance due to this motion that would turn out to be this expression okay and it can be easily seen that this is what is happening okay and you would see that this would mean that uh, delta c the change in capacitance is given by this expression again it is linear with respect to displacement 
okay and using this uh, method you can uh, measure the set displacement okay and uh, what is to be noted is that the starker the difference between so if epsilon r increases okay sensitivity decrease sensitivity also increases okay and of course with w and d the usual way of w will increase sensitivity and smaller values of d is going to increase sensitivity okay the concept this concept of having two different dielectric medium and taking a parallel combination of the capacitance okay, can also be used for liquid level measurement okay, here in the tank that you are holding the liquid you have two cylindrical rod two concentric uh, cylindrical rods okay and uh, the what is necessary is the liquid whose level to is to be measured should be non conducting and the gas in which it is kept should also be a non conducting gas so, so since most gases are relatively non conducting that's not a very tight constraint but what is important is this liquid is to be non conducting so that it can act as a dielectric okay. there would be the in the construction is that there are holes at the bottom of this outer cylinder okay so that the liquid can enter between these two plates so this inner cylinder and the outer cylinder will act as two plates of the capacitor and so there will be two capacitances here one with this section and one with this section okay one with the liquid and one with the gas okay now how does this work out now if we assume that the overall height of this electrode is much greater than the radius of this cylinder or the electrode cylinder and the distance between these two cylinders that is this a okay is again much much less than the radius of these cylinders okay if these two assumptions are made then uh, we can find the capacitance of this cylindrical capacitor of the electrode with cylindrical capacitors okay using this formula c is 2 pi epsilon l by natural log of r0 by ri where r0 is the outer cylinder's radius okay and ri is the inner cylinder's radius so in this particular case uh, what you have is ro is ri is just this r okay ro is a plus r okay you see that the outer cylinder's radius is a plus r so ro by ri can be written as a plus r by r which is 1 plus a by r okay so overall what we can say is that the capacitance is 2 pi divided by natural log of a plus r okay and for the liquid capacitor the height is h1 and the uh, permittivity is epsilon 1 similarly for the capacitor with the gas as the dielectric it is h2 e2 okay and since both of them are connected in parallel because both these electrodes are uh, connected to the output terminals then it would mean that the capacitance is just additive you get this uh, value of the total capacitance now if there is a change in the height due to change in the liquid level okay 
that would mean that uh, there is a delta h change okay that will result in the value of the capacitance changing by this amount so this h1 increases by delta h h2 decreases by delta h okay and this was the original value of the capacitance so the variation in the capacitance can be given like this okay and this if you say epsilon 2 is equal to uh, epsilon 0 and epsilon 1 is epsilon r epsilon 0 this expression epsilon 1 minus epsilon 2 can be written as epsilon 0 into epsilon r minus 1 this looks quite similar to the case that you have with the the earlier one with the linear displacement case okay so in any case here you would have the height and the capacitance change being linearly related again okay so this is another way that you can use the change of capacitance for the uh, measurement of liquid level okay moving further let's look into the advantages and disadvantages of using capacitive transducers okay uh, typically capacitors are light and of low weight so the they typically would require lesser torque to move okay and then and 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 so the transducer is also light and so the sensitivity is also high in that uh, sense in addition what is to be noted is the impedance of a capacitor is high at lower frequencies okay so they naturally have high impedance and naturally have low loading effect up to a suitably high frequency say up to 50 kilohertz you can use the capacitances effectively okay because they would not load the uh, circuit as such okay and because uh, particularly for uh, the case where the plate distance is uh, varied you can have very fine resolution and uh, measure displacements in the micrometer range also okay and uh, if you compare with the inductive transducer the capacitive transducer are not affected by stray magnetic fields where the indu inductive transducers were affected and serious robustness against stray magnetic field that is another of the ad advantages of using capacitive transducer uh, however all is not well on the flip side what you have here is that the capacitive transducers are sensitive to stray electric fields okay which would mean that the metallic parts of the capacitive transducers should be insulated from one another so that stray electric fields uh, do not affect the capacitance and in fact they should also be insulated from earth also okay appropriate earthing should also be given to the circuit so they are not influenced by stray electric fields okay and another the other disadvantage that you have is that the circuit in in quite a few cases either you have to have additional circuitry to bring in linearity or else you have to live with the non-linearity so it is basically when you have high resolution circuits like this uh, changing the plate distance which was the method by which high resolution was achieved that effectively gives a non-linear relationship between the displacement and the capacitance so either you have to have an additional circuitry to bring in linearity or you have to directly use the non-linearity non-linear relationship for your measurements okay that is another uh, point that has to be kept in mind okay and the other point is that we had said that the high impedance of the capacitance is a advantage because there is no lo loading effect however if you are going to use the 
capacitor you have to, if you want if you are going to measure not the capacitance value but the voltage across one of these capacitors okay then that would mean that the voltmeter's resistance should be also very high okay the voltmeter resistance should be higher than the capacitor's resistance also okay so in order to inadvertently short the circuit because probably the voltmeter resistance is not as high as the capacitor so in order to avoid serious errors you should either use a high value or high resistance voltmeter as a measuring device or you have to change the operating frequency so that the capacitor's uh, impedance is lowered okay another uh, disadvantage or another pitfall that is usually not uh, that is usually ignored okay is that is again the high output impedance of the capacitor and how it affects the insulation so if you have a capacitor here okay what would happen is that basically what you have here is that the, there is an insulating medium here okay so if the capacitance value of high is high there is an alternate circuit here which through an insulating medium okay that can be have that can have a impedance that is comparable to the impedance of the capacitor so there is an alternate path of the current also okay so the insulating resistance the, insu the res insulator resistance should also be quite high in case of capacitance or at least it should be much higher than the capacitor's resistance resistance so in any case what is to be kept in mind is the capacitor has to be operated in a range where the capacitor's uh, impedance is lower than the impedance of the meter or the insulation but quite higher than the impedance of other components of your circuitry okay so with that we come to the end again we will the you you can refer to the same two chapters from ek sony and the chapter on measurement system of the uh, on motion uh, motion and dimension measurement in diobling okay from the book measurement systems application and design okay and uh, that that we come to the end thank you for your patience